Here, just a little bit of shaved Parmesan. Sprinkle it. Oh, doesn't that look great? Now let's take a bite. Hey, hi, I'm Amy and I'm in my little kitchen. Uh, anyway, I am here. It is still winter time and I am making another uh, meal to give to Isabel and Jacob because they just had their baby. And I think the one thing uh, about meal trains or getting people to, you know, uh, make a meal for you because when you're a new parent, you are embracing a life-changing moment, a wonderful life-changing moment. And sometimes you don't have enough time to figure it out that you also got to take care of yourself because you're taking care of this little one. But this added addition of laundry and not enough sleep and all of this other stuff. So I am more than thrilled to uh, make a meal for my son and daughter-in-law, Jacob and Isabel, and their new baby. And besides, come on, it gives me another reason to go over and see that precious little one. So they did have a baby boy. I'm so excited for them and everything. So I am, this is kind of like a one meal made similar, but two different ways. Because Jacob and Isabel really, I shouldn't say really, they don't eat meat. They're more like vegetarians. And Isabel uh, doesn't handle dairy as well either. So I am making a vegetarian type of tortellini soup and I'm making a tortellini, tortellini soup for Chris and I, but our soup is gonna contain beef broth, sausage, and theirs is gonna contain vegetable broth, obviously no sausage, but, I also, but I'm also gonna add just a little bit more to theirs because uh, sometimes soups to me, especially when it comes to like minestrone or this type of soup, I don't know, it just needs a little bit more. And with us having sausage, to me that's plenty, but I think I may go ahead and add a can of white beans or navy beans or whatever, cannelli beans, or a can of black beans. I think I'm gonna delete the black beans because that should be reserved for something else. So we're gonna have tortellini. I'm gonna add kale to it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add white beans and maybe a can of corn to theirs, just to add some more things. We still have carrots. We still have onions in their soup, the same as I'm doing over here. So like I said, onions, onions, <laughs> carrots, carrots. This is my garbage thing or whatever. Um, we're I'm gonna add kale to both. We're gonna have sausage. In fact, this sausage is from my local butcher, the meeting place. And, but it's also sausage that Chris and I bought into on half of a pig that was raised and grown at Rolla Farms during pumpkin season. So I know for you people who aren't meat lovers, that might not sound so great, but I tell you, you've never had more organic, best meat products when you grow it your own. So anyway, so I like shopping the meeting place because it's all local meat. Usually it's organic. And, you know, just smaller farms and stuff like that. I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. So I'm going to finish up chopping up garlic for us. I'm going to do a little jalapeno because I just want a little bit of kick to it. Um, besides the fire roasted uh, tomatoes. So I am adding a can of crushed tomatoes. What, what is this? Uh, 28 ounces, I think. I think that's 28 ounces. Yeah. 28 ounces, and I know I don't have my glasses on, and like 14 and a half ounce can of fire roasted tomatoes. I'm doing that the same. I'm gonna add about half a can, so about three ounces of tomato paste to each of the soup. So one thing about soup I love, once you get everything cut up, it is really easy peasy. It's just combining stuff and just, I don't know, I think it's easy. And especially when you have leftovers. So I'm gonna get, making sure I have everything here for you. In fact, I gotta get out the tortellini. I'm gonna to cook those a little bit before I add it to the soup. 
because um, I think we'll be able to judge a little bit more about how much broth we need because obviously pasta will continue absorbing some of that liquid. And even when you have leftovers and you put it in the fridge and take it out, the pasta continues to kind of absorb some of that liquid. So don't be afraid if you gotta add a little more broth or something like that. So let me get the rest of this stuff going here and we'll be ready to go. Okay, I think I've got everything. I went ahead and got myself a little bit of coffee. And look at our new cups over at Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. I love them because I, I love them because they're colored. Uh, they're kind of fun. They kind of fit in the kitchen or elsewhere. But I think we have these in like a green, like a forest green, red, and this deep blue color. But it is my MVP, Matter Value Purpose. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the soup that I'm making for Jacob and Isabel. And like I mentioned, the only difference is I'm gonna add a can of white beans and a can of corn to theirs because it, theirs is vegetarian, so it doesn't contain meat. And I just thought I'd get something to bulk it up a little bit more. And ours for Chris and I, ours over here is gonna contain some sausage. I used Italian sausage and beef broth and really, that's really the only difference here. The broth, two cans of vegetables compared to the meat. Other than that, it still contains carrots, onions, garlic, seasoning, salt and pepper, crushed tomatoes. Um, I might even add a little bit. No, to tomato paste will be enough. I was going to say, should I add a little bit of tomato sauce? I'll wait and see on that one. But what, So when you go see this video, you can kind of get two different versions as I talk about it but I'm focusing on theirs. And in my recipe, I'll give you, you know, those two options in my notes as well. So anyway, let's finish chopping up the garlic because I need garlic for our soup. I thought I'd go ahead and still cut up everything, but I don't know if I'll cook for this video. I don't know if I'll cook for both of them. Because tell you the truth, I don't know if I have enough time. I've got to head on over there in about an hour so that they can get it and then heat it up and have it continue to cook for a little bit. Because Chris and I have to go off and film. And we're filming really close by to where Jacob and Isabel live, so I thought this would be perfect. Before we film, go over there and visit for a short time. And then deliver a meal. I think this would be great served with a little bit of garlic bread or artisan bread. Some of that uh, like rosemary or garlic artisan bread. I think that's a good hearty type of thing. And look at what I'm going to do here. So my garlic is chopped for us. I did about two to three cloves of garlic. Uh, for theirs, I did about a large onion, maybe a half, about three carrots. For us, the same thing, maybe a little bit more than half of a large onion. If you've got small ones, I would do a, a complete onion here and a complete onion there. And then I have, you know, three uh, carrots over here. Oh, in fact, I, no, you know what? This is only one. I still got to cut one. Oh, dear. No wonder it was sitting here. And like I always tell you guys, I cut my onions ahead of time, not on video, because I don't care what I do, my eyes always seem to water, water, water. And when I cut up onions, I don't breathe through my nose, I just breathe through my mouth, that doesn't help. The only thing that really helps is if I have a cut onion and I didn't use it all and I put it in the fridge, something about it being cold or Something like that. I don't know. Doesn't seem to bother me as much. So I'm just mincing up a half of a jalapeno and then having half the half. So it's really about a quarter of a jalapeno pepper. I, I just want a little bit of heat. I don't, I don't want a lot. I love spicy foods. I love a little bit of heat. 
but sometimes I've had food that it's way too hot. And um, I, it's like I can't taste anything else. Let me get a little thing for this. Once that water starts boiling, I'll have to check on it. I'll get my tortellini in there. And I just kind of really want to cook the um, tortellini not all the way done, but halfway through, just so that it doesn't absorb all of the liquid, but enough to give it flavor. And another thing you can do if you do do it this way, because you can put the tortellini right in your soup, but be prepared to maybe add a little more broth as the pasta absorbs the broth of the soup. And if you do need a little more water, because you already got the pasta water in there, because your tortellini pasta is cooking in there, uh, save some of the pasta water that you actually cooked your tortellini in, and you can just add a little bit to the soup. So I've done it either way. I think either, you know, either one works. And I think I'm gonna add anywhere from maybe four to six cups to the soup of broth. It really depends on how much broth you want compared to how much stuff you want in the soup. Now, the one thing about a jalapeno that you gotta really be careful of, because believe me, I have forgotten this. Do not suddenly put your fingers anywhere near your mouth or your eyes or whatever because it will sting, it will hurt. Okay, so here I'm gonna cut up this carrot. Then after I do this, I'm gonna check on my water and add my tortellini. Get this chopped a little bit. And I usually like kind of like fresh tornellini over dry, but either one will work. Obviously, if you've got a family and everything, the dried tornellini will um, last a little bit longer. Okay, get that in there. Well, there went a carrot on the floor. Where's my Felix when I need him? I miss that little dog. Okay, I'm gonna finish cutting up this carrot. And like I said, I'll check on the water and we'll see if we've gotta add the tortellini yet. Okay, we have our water boiling over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt to give that pasta some flavor. Don't be too shy on the salt. But this is tortellini, so it's already gonna have some salt in it because it's cheese tortellini. So, oops, wait a minute, sorry about that. So I'm just gonna dump in this whole bag because it's going for two soups. And believe me, this will only take a few minutes. So like I said, I'm gonna concentrate on Jacob and Isabel's soup. So I've got some oil uh, heating up over here and we're gonna start over there. Hi, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you are enjoying it. And I would really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to it. And oh, don't forget to click that little bell up there and you'll be notified of future videos that are new and coming on my YouTube channel. So thank you so much for that. And I would really appreciate it if you shared the video and let other people know and encourage them to subscribe and like the videos as well. So anyway, thank you and back to the video. Okay, whoa, I've got a hot pan here. I'll put it on too high of a heat. So I'm gonna talk a little bit louder so you can hear me over the fan. I'm gonna dump my carrots in and my onions. I'm gonna saute that a little bit, cook until they're a little bit translucent. Where did my salt go? I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And I gotta get my salt. 
keep an eye on my tortellini because like I said, I don't, I do not want to cook them all the way. Just about halfway. Just to kind of give them a head start. All right. Might have turned it down too much. So this will take probably about five minutes or more. You want them cooked enough that, um, you know, they don't have a lot of cooking time in the soup. So I'm thinking saute them for about five, eight minutes on like medium high heat. And after this is all, when you're almost done sauteing the onions and the carrots, then you can go ahead and add in the garlic for about a minute, cook for about a minute, because you don't want to burn the garlic. And then you can go ahead and add in the jalapeno, the little tomato paste, and then cook the tomato paste with the veggies just for a little bit. Then you can just dump all the other stuff in here. I would wait for the kale or spinach or whatever you want to use. And we got a stray little onion here that I do not like. Look at that little piece. No, don't like that. And then um, add the kale or the spinach in just before you're about to serve. I'll probably go ahead and add it in here uh, when I take it over to Jacob and Izzy's, but I will just put it in there, get ready to go, and it can still cook within the soup when they heat it up. So anyway. Okay, what I did here, I think my pasta uh, was cooked enough. They could still do, a, they could still cook a little bit more, but I took them out, put them in this bowl. And so we're just gonna continue to build upon the soup here. The carrots and the onions seem to be done. We're gonna add in the garlic and just cook these until, I don't know, they're aromatic. Or, you know, you can kind of smell a little bit of that garlic aroma. I'm gonna add in a little bit of jalapeno. I think this will create enough heat. Turn my heat down just a little bit, medium low. In fact, I got this pot for Jacob and Izzy. So I told them I'll come over and pick it up, you know, often and make another meal, put it in there if, if it, you know, calls for that. And so I thought, why don't, why don't you just get them a pot? That's, that's what I did. I think they were very appreciative of that because, you know, I have fun cooking for people. So we're going to add in half a can of tomato paste. That'll provide a rich, you know, flavor to this soup too. But we're going to cook it down a little bit. Get it all mixed in there. I think it'll have a nice roasted kind of flavor to it. Kind of get the in intensity of tomato paste throughout the vegetables. I think that'll be good. So as the, ta as the tomato paste cooks, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of basil. Oh wow, I thought I had used this already. I guess I didn't. So we're just gonna kinda take this off if I can. If not, you know what I do. I just poke, poke it through with the end of a spoon, fork, or knife. There we go. Just gonna add in a little bit of basil. I don't know, maybe a half a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon. Depends on how much you like. A little bit of thyme. I might add a little bit of rosemary in ours because we've got that beef broth going on. I love hot Hungarian paprika, paprika, paprika. I always add in another syllable to that. And I'm gonna add in, oh, that was time, what was this? Oh, Italian seasonings. I have everything turned around that I can't see. <laughs> they all look so similar. So a little bit of time, about a teaspoon. Okay, we're gonna stir that around. Get those flavors mixed in here. Now we're gonna add in a can of corn. I hope this will go well. A can of beans. 
We're gonna go in and add in a can of fire roasted tomatoes, because I love fire roasted tomatoes. And see all that stuff in the can? Because I'm gonna put broth with this, I'm gonna rinse out that can with the broth. Because, you guys know me, I hate leaving stuff behind. Who, who likes being left behind? I know I don't. I just wanna make sure we get everything. What else do I have here? Well, let's, let's stir this around first. Get this. So, you know, being vegetarian, I, for me, it's probably a little bit harder to cook for because you wanna get flavor, you wanna get goodness and nutrients and protein and stuff. So one of these boxes is about four cups. Let's see how much I actually need. So like I said, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit to this can, swirl it around, dump it in there. We're gonna do the same over here with the crushed tomatoes. So one can, 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes. One can, 14 ounces of fire roasted tomatoes, a can of white beans and a can of corn. And those of you who are vegetarian, I'm sure you probably add different things to this. I mean, I could see potatoes adding into it, but you want something to complement with the uh, tortellini as well. So I'm gonna add all of this in there because I know the tortellini will continue to absorb some of this liquid. There we go. Man, this looks so good. And then once you get that nice green kale in there, I think it's going to be great. What is this little piece floating around? Oh yeah, fire roasted. Huh? I was like, what is that little piece? And it's because of the fire roasted tomatoes. So let me see. Do I have that? I think I have pretty much everything added in here. See how simple this was? So I'm just gonna gently scoop in about half or more of this tornellini. I should have brought two packages, but I wouldn't have needed two, maybe one and a half. And I think the tortellini I got was about a pound. So, We got a little bit of tornellini in there. I'm gonna add in a little bit more. There we go. Boy, maybe I should have got two packages. Well, I definitely made a lot of soup. Yeah, I think that's enough. Okay. So I might pare down <laughs> on the soup I make for Chris and I. So there we go. And then I think after it simmers for about an hour, taste it. See if you need any more salt or any more herbs or something else that, like that that you want to add to it. Because not until soup cooks for a little bit or cools down will you really be able to know what else you may need. So pretty much this is done besides uh, doing the kale. So I'm going to go ahead and I still got a little bit of time to get the soup ready for Chris and I, but I think I might go out and get a little bit more tornellini. So I might go ahead and cook the sausage up, saute the vegetables, and maybe put that stuff in the broth and hold off on the tortellini and the kale for us because we'll be coming back to eat later. Okay, so I've got uh, sausage meat cooking up over on the stove there. Uh, so we're I'm gonna be in the process of making soup for Chris and I. 
because it's different than the vegetarian tortellini soup that I'm using. But it's basically mainly the same ingredients, except I'm not using a can of corn or a can of beans in ours. I'm doing, I'm just seeing, and that's the thing I love about soup. Forgot to take that off when I washed this stuff. Um, that is the thing I love about soup, is that you can really make it your own. You know, there's traditional things that you put in soup just because those are the basics. And right now I'm just peeling kale and this is like the rib of kale. You don't want that because it's too tough, way too tough. And I'll probably give this a rough chop because I don't want big pieces of kale in my soup. And because I ran out of white beans anyway, I'm not gonna add white beans to mine even if I wanted to. Because I'm really trying to, tell you the truth, trim down my uh, pantry. I don't know what it is, but maybe it's because of the way I grew up, my mom having to work. She wasn't really a big fan of grocery shopping. So she, we would have a stocked pantry just in case, just maybe something you need when you cook it. And so I grew up that way and that's how I always have cooked. But I'm learning, trying to learn to how to be in less space, but still have your staples. So I finally ran out of white beans, navy beans, cannelli beans, or whatever beans you want. So this will be one batch. Let me see here. Let me get a bowl for this. Because like I said, I'm gonna put this in just before I leave for um, Jacob and Izzy's house. That way they don't have to think about anything. I've got some really good bread in my fridge that I'm gonna bring on over to them. They might like that. I hear my meat cooking over there. I'm gonna have to take a look at it. So yeah, I'm just doing the kale. This is the last part that I'm doing for the soup. And then Jacob and Izzy's soups will be done. The soup for Chris and I, easy peasy, because besides sauteing the vegetables here and adding the tomatoes and the broth, pretty much done. I love soup. And if you make enough, soup is even better the next day. <laughs> and like I said, you can find this recipe over on my YouTube channel, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. And I'd love it if you guys subscribe, subscribe to it. You can find all the recipes from my uh, videos and recipes from volume one, or volume two. And here we are in a new year and I'm working on volume three. I'm gonna come up with some other products that I think are really cool and I wish I had them when I was growing up. But again, little teaser, more later. But I have to hurry up here because we've gotta go and film here pretty soon. So I wanna have enough time to bring this on over to um, Jacob and Izzy. Okay. So the, the sausage meat is finished for the soup that I'm making for Chris and I. So I'm gonna spoon this over here in another bowl and then dump the carrots and the onions in here and get all the rest of that flavor. I am not gonna put much salt in this because the sausage already has salt. Uh, maybe the tortellini. And I usually try and get no salt um, tomato sauce and tomatoes, but you can't always find that. So let me get going over here and we'll add in the rest of the vegetables. Let me tilt you guys down just a little bit here. Hopefully you can still see me, I don't know. I always have problems with this thing. Okay. I'm gonna put this stuff over here, make sure I have all the sausage meat so we don't burn things. 
No one wants burnt food. And sometimes you have to drain your sausage. So, you know, you, you make the judge. You be the judge. So I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. I'm gonna dump my carrots in and my onions. I'm hoping this will be a big enough pan. And again, this will take another uh, five to eight minutes just to get them soft. If you want them translucent, go ahead, but just to get them soft. I'm just gonna sprinkle just a dab. Where did my salt go? Oh, here it is. Just a dab of salt. Just so the veg so the vegetables have, um, uh, you know, a little bit of flavor. So we're gonna continue to do that. My sausage is done. I'm gonna put that aside. We got my veggies and my or my spices, my tomato paste over here. I'll be ready for that. Okay, we'll just wait till the veggies are done. Okay, while the veggies are gonna be cooking for the soup for Chris and I, I'm gonna finish off this recipe and I'm gonna put in the kale. Now this may seem like a lot, but believe me, this will cook down. This will be our green ring. Just kind of push it down a little bit. And look at how that just adds so much great color besides being good for you. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna add the remainder of it. And to top this off, I'll top it off on mine so you can see it. But to top it off, what I think is really great is to add shaved Parmesan to it, just before you serve it. And if you want, you can sprinkle a little bit of parsley on it too. So yeah, I think the soup for Jacob and Izzy is done. There we go. Okay, so I'm done making the soup for Jacob and Izzy. So Chris and I will be ready to leave here in about five minutes. I'm gonna finish cooking up the vegetables for the soup, tortellini soup for Chris and I, but it's made with beef broth and sausage. So I hope they enjoy this. Cause look at this, I mean, come on. How can you not? So I hope they will. Oh, you know the one thing I did forget to put in here was celery. Oh, I may chop up a few for mine. Do a little bit of celery. You don't have to have celery. It's not a game changer. But it's always, you know, it's kind of like those three basics of soup for a lot of soup. Carrots, onions, and celery. So maybe I'll chop up a few for ours. And then I've got some good bread to go with it. And off we go. Okay, just like the soup that I made for Jacob and Izzy, my veggies are pretty much done. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the garlic. You gotta have garlic. I love garlic. And I'm gonna add in the, how should I say, one quarter of a jalapeno pepper, meaning you cut the jalapeno pepper in half, you seed it, and then you cut the half in half. One quarter. To me, that'll be enough heat. And then I'll add in the remainder of the tomato paste. Because that's what I added into the other tortellini soup. So we're gonna, on the recipe, I'm still gonna call this sausage tortellini soup. Or tortellini sausage soup, I don't know. But I'm gonna have the version of vegetarian, or at least what will work for Jacob and Izzy when it comes to vegetarian. Okay, we're just gonna cook up the tomato paste just a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, I got my beef broth. And once this cooks up a little bit, it'll only take a few minutes. It's not like it's...
you know, half hour, 20 minutes or something, but just enough to kind of warm it up and little, kind of roast it almost. Oops, I mean, tomato, um, tomato paste is already intense flavor. A carrot got loose, guys. Um, but still, there's just so much more flavor when you're able to um, cook the tomato paste as well. More depth of flavor, I guess. I guess you could say that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my sausage over here. Get that all mixed in. And because Chris and I are gonna go out, I'm just gonna simmer this for a few more minutes, turn it off, and then we'll bring it up to a temperature to heat it up again, and then I'll add the tornellini, because they're already cooked, almost. So I have, boy, I got so much stuff here. Oh yeah, I forgot the seasoning. Again, I'm gonna add in about a teaspoon of Italian seasonings. I'm gonna add in some thyme. I'm gonna add in some, whoa. Oops, I licked my finger, that wasn't good. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of basil because there's so much, about a teaspoon, two teaspoons of thyme, uh, maybe a teaspoon or two of um, Italian seasonings, and definitely a little bit of oregano, um, rosemary. Okay. Oops, before the broth, I wanna add in one can, 14 ounces, not the 28, because it's only Chris and I, of crushed tomatoes, fire roasted tomatoes. Stir that around. So it's almost kind of like we're layering the soup, getting all that depth of flavor. Oh, yummy, yummy. So comforting. And like I did for Jacob and Isabel's, I'm going to add the broth to this, swish out the can, get all that other extra tomato stuff that's still left in the can. Because look at that. I mean, there's still stuff left in there. Now I'm gonna add in the rest of the beef broth. Oh yeah, this'll be able to handle everything. There we go. I'm gonna add in the rest. So, like I said, um, how many ounces is this? 32 ounces, about, you know, uh, four cups. And this will be enough for us. I know it's, it seems a lot less than what was in Jacob and Izzy's, but it's the same. I guess it's the same kind of pot. And there we go. And it's great if you can let this simmer for about 30 to 45 minutes before you add the tornellini. Cook it for another 15 minutes maybe. Won't take long. But if you're using like dried or fresh tortellini that hasn't been cooked, cooked yet, uh, that'll probably take about 10 minutes. But also remember, you might need a little bigger pot and it absorbs the liquid. So be sure to have some extra broth on hand. Okay, so we are done here. And so I'll be back to finish this off. Okay, I am Amy and I'm back in my little kitchen because I have just finished making 
tortellini sausage soup. Now, there's a lot of variations to this, and I made more of a vegetarian for Jacob and Izzy, so I took that over to them last night, Chris and I did, and so now we're having our sausage tortellini. Basically the same, so you can check out the rest of this video and the recipe, and you'll see how I went about making it. I added sausage in here. I've got tornellini. I have crushed tomatoes. I have fire roasted tomatoes in here. You could even add a little bit of tomato sauce, but then I think it becomes more of a tomato sauce instead of a soup. Uh, you can add vegetable broth. Because, we add, because I added tomatoes, I added beef broth, or you can add uh, chicken stock uh, or chicken uh, broth to it too. Um, I have onions in here, I have carrots in here, I have a little bit of celery, definitely tornellini. And I chose cheese tornellini, four cheeses I think, tornellini, uh, they're fresh tornellini, they're not the dry kind, they, they're, they were in the refrigerated section. So really find a good brand or whatever you have at your storage of tortellini. Um, I added kale into this, but you could go ahead and add spinach into it or whatever other green thing you may want to do. Um, I'm going to uh, put a little bit of shaved uh, Parmesan cheese on the soup, just a little decoration. And then maybe even a little parsley just to dress it up a little bit. So anyway, check out my YouTube channel for this recipe and all the rest. So I'm gonna dish this up, take a little bite, and oh, it is on a cold winter night in January. But you know what, soup to me, I have a lot more of it. I make a lot more of it in the month of January, maybe December, possibly a little bit of February here. If I was in my home Midwest in Michigan, I'd probably make it at least for four months. Um, but I occasionally have soup during the summer, but not as much, obviously. So anyway, Let's dish this up. Okay, so I just dished myself up a little bit of soup. Oh, doesn't that look great? It's just so warm and comforting. I'm just, and I'll just uh, crisp up some too, because he's around, probably hungry. And I think this goes great with maybe homemade biscuits, homemade biscuits or even a good artisan bread, like rosemary. Okay. Even though I put kale in here, or spinach, hearty spinach, I don't know, I just kind of like to dress it up. So I'm gonna just use a kind of vegetable peeler and just kind of do some shaved Parmesan cheese here. See, aren't I getting better at <laughs> pronouncing? that word of course i say of course i say it in my mind first before i say it but that's better than saying parmesan or parmesan hopefully hopefully my daughter will be proud of me but anyway here just a little bit of shaved parmesan sprinkle it oh, doesn't that look great now let's take a bite Oh, it smells and tastes and looks so good as the Parmesan cheese just kind of melts in the heat of the, let me get a little carrot here. Mm. So good. Because I used the beef broth, I really like the fact that I put in a little bit of rosemary. It gives more of a heartier, I don't know, flavor to it. Taste the tortellini. Mmm. 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 So good. Okay. You can find this recipe over on my YouTube channel, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. Thank you for being in my kitchen and yours. And I hope you keep gathering, keep making the recipes, keep having fun in the kitchen. Till next time.